uh, slide is visible. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, we are. We can see your slide. Hello. We can see your Let's slide, see Mr. Arjun, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. So you can see that we see the word of the street paper. China is the word production on the top list after the Mexico, then Turkey, then Indonesia and Spain. But uh, India is no here. There is uh, very top in this land. There are list. If you see the export ban of uh, also, Mexico and Spain and uh, Netherlands, they are the, in the top list. So capsicum production in India, you can see it's uh, mainly in Karnataka, uh, then Himachal and Haryana. And uh, basically this crop is brought by British soldier to India. And uh, although that India ranks uh, first in chili production, but uh, very low in the capsicum. Uh, as it is cultivated in uh, many states, but uh, Karnataka, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, they are the major states. Uh, we have an area over 24,000 hectares with the annual production of uh, 3.21 lakh uh, metric tons. Export is uh, very minimum, it's uh, just uh, 55 million US dollars. So there is a very huge potential of uh, export of this crop uh, as there is a very demand, uh, very good demand for a good size, longer shelf life, and good uh, attractive color is needed for the export. So let's go for that, how we can grow it. So uh, first of all, let's see, see the land selection and soil conditions. So you have to avoid the area where it's uh, rainfall is very heavy or humidity remains very high. Uh, just like in the Konkan area or uh, even in the Eastern Ghats also. Avoid area of uh, high wind velocity avoid low lying areas streams or rivers avoid tobacco crop because uh, there is a risk of uh, aphid uh, vector viruses soil should be well drained sandy loam and ph should be neutral between 6 to 7. so climate needs uh, it can be grown uh, best in the greenhouse if you are going for a colored one but if you want to grow green one then outdoor uh, uh, is also good uh, you need a very uh, warm and sunny field just like you can see in the picture uh, second picture daytime temperature between 25 to 30 degrees centigrade and uh, night uh, temperature between 18 to 20 is the best uh, if temperature ex uh, goes uh, higher than 35 or fall below 12 degree then uh, fruit setting and flowering will be affected low relative humidity between 50 to 70 best in the greenhouse is 65. to control the temperature and humidity mr has started for three four minutes with half an hour interval that is the people that who do the cultivation in the greenhouses so there are different uh, structures for greenhouse so uh, polytunnel, net house, poly house, retractable. So you are aware about, about them. Commonly that uh, uh, in India, it is grown in said net house, poly house. And now uh, some projects has come up in the retractable roof also. Uh, said house uh, is uh, very good uh, for the spring and summer, not uh, during rainy and winter season. Uh, because during rainy season, butter uh, goes inside the net house and uh, it will destroy your crop. Natural ventilated poly house, they are good for extended winter production in mild climate, just like uh, Bangalore, or you can say the Pune area, or you can say the middle of the Himachal and Uttarakhand. So now the retractable roofs, they are coming up. Uh, it's a very good for uh, plain area and uh, hot and dry, hot or humid uh, places. Uh, very good for a summer and rainy season with the long production cycle. So uh, is the in open field is three to five kg per square meter. In net houses, five to eight kg per square meter. And in poly houses, eight to 12 kg per square meter. And retractable, if we are talking about greens, then it 
to 25 kg per square meter and for colored one you can get a yield of uh, 18 to 20 kg per square meter so there are uh, huge advantages of uh, growing capsicum under the protected cultivation uh, so as compared to the uh, open field we get a very good high yield and uh, also very good quality so some of the major advantage that uh, higher yield quality i already spoken better environmental condition you will provide less damage from insects and pests uh, produce is available all year round harvest is possible multiple times so no, next step is that sowing and transplanting you can see the pictures also the good seedling that uh, uh, our client is growing uh, under the retractable in uh, uh, telangana so papers they are grown from seedling basically start uh, seedling sowing in those seven to ten weeks before the transplanting date uh, means that uh, at least uh, 35 to uh, 40 days uh, before uh, uh, when you have a transplanting date so you you have to plan accordingly so you have to raise the nursery so best uh, in february march in north india year round you can do in south india best quality can be produced in the detectable roof house as can you see can see, you can see in the picture here so uh, there is a good root shoot uh, ratio you can avoid the uh, trans transplant shock because what happened that when we grow in a very highly controlled environment if you transplant that seedling into the uh, natural condition or the, uh, at, at the um, uh, other place than where you are growing the seedling so there is a transplant uh, shock so you can avoid uh, in this way because you have a very good hardened uh, uh, well developed the root system uh, under the retractable for the seedling so that uh, you have a very less mortality rate so nursery as, uh, as uh, uh, for a one acre you need a 16 to 20,000 uh, seedling uh, seed, these uh, seeds are shown in the pro trays with the 98 uh, whole cavities as you can see these should be filled with the sterilized coco pit and seeds are sown to a depth of half centimeter trays are covered with the plastic seeds until germination occurs uh, one week after sowing the trays are moved to the greenhouse structure uh, and watered regularly so these grown-up seedlings are transplanted to the main area after 30 to 35 days so you can see this uh, picture here with a uh, very good root development so uh, saplings here can, i can show you the brief video because these are the well-developed saplings uh, grown by uh, our grower in triangle farm you can see here although this uh, nursery is grown in a net house so uh you need uh, to prepare the uh, soil bed if you are growing in the soil or uh, uh, you need to do a lot of operation there even sterilization of the soil also so if you you are having a virgin soil so you can grow uh, this crop uh, instantly for two three years then you thereafter you can switch over to the cocoa pit uh, uh, media so area should be actually plowed uh, thoroughly and uh, uh, well uh, decomposed organic manure should be uh, uh, mixed with the uh, uh, soil so before uh, going for uh, this application of fertilizer so you have to check uh, you have to test your soil so whatever the deficit there you can apply accordingly the minimum dimensions of the bed are 100 centimeter wide 
22 centimeter high and uh, working space of 45 to 40 50 centimeter between the beds so you can see here this is uh, the working space of uh, almost uh, uh, two foot two feet or 50 centimeter in between so uh, uh, when you prepare this soil bed you have to drench it uh, with uh, four percent formaldehyde and uh, it should cover with the plastic uh, at least for one week and then thereafter you have to remove the plastic cover and then uh, uh, you have to there are a lot of fumes that formaldehyde actually uh, um, emits so you have to uh, remove them by blowing regularly so transplanting in soil media you can see here that how we do that bed should be adequately buttered before the transplant you can see the this picture here in the left hand side so one uh, bed can accommodate two rows of seedling the spacing between the two rows is 60 centimeter that is uh, 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 two foot two feet and between plants should be 30 centimeters so you can see this spacing should be two feet and between the plant this uh, plant to plant should be one feet so during the initial stage the seedling are sprayed with a pesticide to prevent any sucking pest infestation uh, mulch, uh, mulch growing beds are water regularly to overcome the heat generated by the mulch beam and to help the seedling establish well in the soil so you can see here uh, because mulch is made of a plastic so uh, it heat up uh, uh, due, due to the uh, sunlight so you have to actually water it regularly uh, so that uh, your plant roots should not be get damaged so seedlings are transplanted into the holes of the polythene mulch film up to the depth of five centimeters you can see here so is you have to make a huge gap in the mulch film so mulch film is uh, made of polyethylene uh, normally it covers in black or sometimes white also uh, most of greenhouse people they use a white one a uh, black one is uh, normally used in the cold climate because it uh, absorbs the heat so you have to prefer the white one the thickness of the film should be around 50 to 100 micron and uh, 1.2 meter width holds 5 centimeter recommended uh, seat should be actually properly uh, anchored here you can see that you have to uh, cover it with the soil so then there are uh, different medias uh, beside the soil that uh, because i am talking uh, uh, in the soil as, as well as soil less also so you can see that uh, we can use the peat moss coco coir rock wool perlite vermiculite sand foam so there are different uh, medias available all over the world but uh, we have a lot of uh, coco coir in india and Sri Lanka so uh, it is uh, 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 easily available and uh, cheap uh, material also and uh, uh, India and Sri Lanka they are the largest uh, producer of the cocoa coir in the world so we supply this material to all over the world especially in India Coimbatore then uh, Tamil Nadu is the hub of uh, uh, this industry so uh, it keeps the soil uh, loose and uh, for the better root uh, development you can see in the picture here uh, it's uh, taken at a uh, triangle farm you can see on 7th of july and this uh, 14th of Ju june how the root development taking place here so if we have a better uh, uh, root development then uh, we get a good uh, plant uh, growth and uh, ultimately the yield so it also has a good water holding capacity uh, and uh, this uh, coco pit has uh, actually doesn't uh, uh, just like uh, other uh, media that uh, it uh, decomposes easily so it doesn't create any environmental hazards so then you can see this is the picture i have taken from the triangle farm uh, uh, 
uh, they have made up a, the system like this so to carry the uh, these uh, seedlings uh, for the transplanting you can see here so you can also modify your uh, your system there as per your uh, needs so this way that you can keep your plant safe also and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, minimize the labor cost also so you can see that how uh, these uh, seedlings they are transplanted in the uh, cocoa meat, uh, cocoa uh, cocoa pit uh, beds So this is the actually literal well, from here uh, you give the water and fertilizer and this is the pipe through which the water and fertilizers comes. So uh, now next comes the pruning and training. Uh, each uh, capsicum plant is trained to retain only two to four stems. Uh, so pruning of the plant start after 15 to 20 days of the transplanting. Uh, which uh, uh, normally uh, done at the interval of uh, one week. After four weeks of transplant, the plants are uh, trained along the plastic twins tied to the main stem. You can see this is a trestling system uh, that uh, uh, you can, you have to uh, tie up this plant with uh, this uh, rope. So after four months, pruning is done once in 10 days. Uh, you can see the grid uh, prepared of the plant like here that uh, this is the uh, trellising system that is already installed inside the retractable roof. So next comes the irrigation part which is very important. Uh, it's a complete irrigation system you can see here. Uh, drip line is the uh, drip irrigation system is the most suitable for uh, these crops. So drip line has to be laid before the mulching uh, uh, mulching film that uh, to be laid out on the beds. So a single uh, drip per liter at the center of the growing bed with the emitting points at 30 centimeter interval is installed and the discharge rate is approximately around two liter per hour. As I have shown you in the previous picture that how it is done. Before irrigating the plants, the soil should be tested for moisture content and then irrigation is provided. Fresh water should be used for irrigation during the summer season. Water is supplied at the edge of the growing bed to compensate the loss of water loss due to evaporation. A greenhouse should always have a facility of water outlet to remove excessive water from the area. So then comes the fertigation. So there are some important points you have to keep in mind. Um, fertigation is the basically the application. Of this conference will now be recorded.
participants, sorry for the inconvenience. The speaker is trying to log in now. Uh, hello, hello, Rajni. Uh, are you getting me? Yes, yeah, we can see you. Hello, we can share the screen. Oh, oh okay, okay. So, I think uh, I was talking here about a pest and disease. Uh, Correct. Yeah. I have to go again. Yeah, so uh, made, uh, I'm repeating it again. So because common pests are aphids, thrips, white fly, fruit borer, nematode, mites, etc. And this is damping of uh, powdery mildew, phytophthora blight, other viral disease. And uh, 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 as you can you see the picture, we need to uh, adopt a good uh, uh, agriculture practices, mainly the uh, IPM practices that uh, uh, you have to follow, whether it's in open or in the controlled environment. Yeah, here you can see the sticky maps. Oh, sorry, sticky, sticky. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, you have to clear the debris uh, after the, uh, the harvesting of the crop. So plant disease-free resistant varieties. So when uh, choosing the chemicals, uh, you have to choose a uh, branded one and uh, for controlling the pest and disease. So uh, there are some uh, physical, physiological disorders also, like blossom and drought or sun scald, fruit cracks. So you have to give a good environment for and uh, nutrition to the crop. So pollination is a actually very big issue here that I want to share with you. Uh, you can see here, this is the video taken at the Triangle Farm where uh, natural weeds they are uh, uh, coming inside because your roof is retractable it's not a close uh, like a net house or poly house so you can pollinate your crop so it is actually very challenging in a conventional system because uh, you have a closed roof you have a some high temperature if temperature is above 35 then bees they do not work so uh, there is a uh, unavailability of the bumblebees which you have to import from outside because government has not allowed uh, to import these bees so you have to rely on the local bees or desi bees which we call so uh, uh, during the rainy season a lot of issues uh, you have because uh, heavy rainfall sometime comes inside uh, to your structure also you can see here this is the video that uh, shared by my client from triangle farm uh, uh, there was a heavy rain continuous for two three days when the monsoon start in the month of july then you can see still that uh, uh, under that uh, have uh, high humidity condition, uh, your crop is still looking very good and uh, uh, very clean. Uh, so this type of crop you can uh, get uh, uh, only in the retractable house because it is a <coughs> roof retracts uh, as per your outside condition. So here you can see the flower. <coughs> so harvesting and yield. So the fruit should be picked up in the early in the morning, the best. 
fruit maturity is known by the smooth and firm look of the fruit as you can see in the picture on the right hand side fruits are removed from the plant with the stem attached to the fruit and collected into a strong cloth bag so you can see that the stem should be this is the stem it should be always with the fruit and you uh, your your pickers they should put up the fruit in a either in a uh, in a uh, basket just like you can see or in a cloth bag bags are not put on the ground rather they are hung from the soldier of the pack pickers fruits should be carefully removed so that the plant is not harmed each variety of capsicum plant produces different uh, quantity of uh, yield green uh, capsicum harvesting is done after 55 to 30, uh, 60 days from transplanting whereas colored one you can harvest after the 75 days uh, this color when they, you have a proper color that uh, 50 50 uh, color or 50 green so you can pick up at that stage it also depends that uh, how far you are trans uh, transporting your produce so average yield that uh, i have already mentioned that uh, in a in a poly house or in a, a net house is something like 80 to 100 tons per hectare but uh, in uh, in retractable you can get the double of this so see here uh, this is the retractable roof x frame structure the same structure at tri tri triangle farm you can see the video here this is the 15 acre structure, six sector. So there are five different growing zones here in the single structure. So all it is for growing the capsicum, mainly the colored one. Last year during the COVID time, because you can't trans transport your material to the far away uh, to the uh, different metro city so they have uh, produced only the uh, green uh, capsicum but this year they are uh, producing the colored one so post harvest management is also very important uh, so most of our growers normally they ignore this uh, thing so it includes actually grading, packing, storing and shrink wrapping. That's very important. You can see here in the picture, uh, you, you are wrapping uh, this uh, crop with the plastic. Uh, so fruits are selected, cleaned properly uh, with the soft cloth after the harvesting. Then these fruits are graded based on the weight, color, shape, size and uh, disorder. Grade A fruits generally have a three, four lobes. Uh, and weigh around uh, 150 gram. You can see these are the lobs. So sometimes three to five lobs you normally have. So uh, CFV cartoons are generally used. They are the best. Uh, uh, either you can put up a single layer or multiple layer. Fruits that are being transported for long distance should be cushioned properly with the within the carton so you have to give a proper space to them so that uh, the fruit should not be crushed the fruit should be stored at a temperature of uh, at uh, 7 to 8 degree centigrade and humidity should be maintained around 90 degree shelf life of cap capsicum is generally estimated to be two three uh, weeks temperature of the storage area should never be below five degree otherwise the fruit uh, will expose to the chilling injury Care should be taken not to store this fruit uh, with other ripe fruit like papaya, mangoes, and uh, tomatoes. The fruit has been uh, sorted, washed, disinfected, surface dried, and then stalks are trimmed before wrapping. You can see that when you do the wrapping, so you have to do all those. Uh, these fruits are then loosely packed in a flexible uh, film before passing through a sink tunnel. So I will show you the video for that. That you can see that how the, this uh, sink wrapping is done. Here you can see. So this way, 
you are not uh, only keeping your, your crop fresh but you are also increasing the shelf life of the produce so it is the value addition of your crop so our client at, at triangle farm they are doing like this so post harvest management is very important so i want to just share the one visual that one of our client doing in australia you can see Uh, there is no audio for that video you can explain okay okay no issue so actually the i just want to show the visuals for that okay. uh, uh, that okay, how okay. the system uh, work in the 12 countries and uh, our client in triangle farm they are also trying to establish such type of uh, harvesting system uh, and they want to install the although the uh, this type of rail system that you can see in the in the video that you have seen that uh, uh, they are not trying but they are trying other uh, modified system here as per our indian condition so there are some tips that uh, uh, for better and uh, good quality uh, yield uh, so you should have a proper and adequate supply of organic manure is to be given in the soil with uh, my good microbial treatment if you are growing in the soil care should be taken to protect the greenhouse cover to minimize the pest on insect attack normally sometimes what happen that uh, there are gaps in our structure that from here insect may enter inside so before uh, transplanting the crop you have to actually uh, take care of your structure see all the gaps and uh, repair Greenhouse should be facilitated by double door system to maintain a uh, protected environment because uh, uh, we, we ignore this thing most of our grower greenhouse growers so they have a single door system but you have to keep a double door system so that when whenever your labor they enter inside so first of all they have to open the first door and they should uh, enter inside then close the first door then open the second door so that because most of uh, insect pests they enter with the human body so to avoid that uh, insect pest infestation you have to take care you have to install a double door system seedlings should be transplanted only after they attain a certain growth means it should be a seven eight leaf stage regular pruning and thinning can help increase the production of the plants so you have to do the, the as i have shown in the video and picture also you have to do uh, at a regular interval irrigation and fertilizer should be adequately supplied so that plant develop a fast and healthy uh, growth cleaning the greenhouse and disinfecting the it regularly can prevent occurrence of disease in plants apical buds should be protected carefully Biocontrol measures or biofertilizer are always suggested for a greenhouse farm. For commercial production, retractable roof, they are the best to give you the good quality and yield. So, uh, you can see here that uh, why we are talking about the retractable roof. The producing uh, sweet paper or capsicum that uh, when the temperature is 35 plus, it's a very challenging in a conventional uh, polyhouse or greenhouse or net house so because uh, you have a very high temperature you have a high humidity which causes a lot of uh, fungal issues so uh, you can't um, uh, get uh, that quality of crops uh, during the especially during the summer and rainy season so retractable roof offers a very good option during uh, uh, this difficult field 
you can grow a crop for a longer duration of eight nine months under the high humidity and temperature condition so here you can see one video that i have taken from my hope that the voice is of you can hear no we are not able to hear the voice okay okay what i i am trying to uh, show here you can see that this is a uh, uh, computer screen which is showing that temperature outside is 43 44 degrees centigrade and and you can say the 60% is the humidity so what uh, uh, this video is showing that uh, uh, when uh, roof is retracted humidity goes down so that how to maintain that humidity level uh, this crop is uh, planted in march third and in the month of may the temperature is the 36 degree outside temperature uh, is uh, 44 degree and uh, during such a high temperature condition so humidity goes down so we have a actually roof closed now during day time so we are increasing our humidity by closing the roof and uh, uh, using the misters so what this picture is showing that uh, when temperature goes 35 plus then uh, there are chances that your flower will uh, abort or uh, fruit will abort or pollination will not take place so during very high hot conditions uh, during some in the month of may or june then how you can man manage with the retractable roof uh, the, your temperature and uh, humidity level so and there is a benefits of uh, putting up insect net uh, below the roof also so the what are the benefits that i will want to show you here so optimum retractable roof design will depend on whether summer humidity levels are high or low or whether insects pose a major problem so if insects are challenged or uh, summer humidity levels are low then it will be an advantage to install insect net below the retractable roof so here you can see uh, there are two type of uh, that uh, insect net system we install one is the stationary uh, insect net uh mainly for a dry tropical climate just like rajasthan so uh here this uh, uh insect net is uh, always a stationary one only the roof above that it will open and close so it will uh, help uh, uh, not only to uh, maintain your humidity level but also protect from the insects also but in case a humid tropical climate we put up a retractable insect net <clears throat> so we, during the uh, very high humidity condition so we can retract both the roof and uh, insect net so here you can see it is the picture from outside and inside uh, of a retractable insect net you can see so uh, again the same i will not go into the other detail so self life uh, uh, of the capsicum in a retractable roof is very very long uh, and you can see in the picture also the thickness of the fruit is uh, almost uh, uh, 13 to 20% uh, higher than the normal that you uh, grow firmness is 40% higher so it means that you have a longer self life so 35 
percent less dehydration after 15 days of forced harvest storage longer means that even after two weeks that it doesn't shrinks so you can see here so so i will show you one crunchy fruit is a video taken uh, at so i will make it fast forward so here the daytime temperature is 36 crop is looking very good i will jump straight away to the uh, yes you can see here you can see the color and size of the fruit that was harvested on that day and uh, see the that when you uh, uh, pick up these uh, fruits on your hand and when you crush it you can see here it's a four lobed see the thickness it's a very crispy So see the thickness of uh, the fruit. So you uh, can also check here uh, at your farm that whether you have the same thickness or not. So uh, I have requested my client Triangle Farm also to do the such exercise of uh, picking the fruit and uh, then crushing it and showing to to the client. So uh, uh, this is the project that it's uh, one of the largest project uh, we have here in India so triangle farm uh, so this play it is actually set up at Jahirabad the phase one of this project is 15 acre and uh, it's uh, with the experience structure you might have seen in the video it is a cooling house actually so because why we call it cooling house because it has a white cooling roof not a transparent one so they have also in-house sorting, packing and cold storage unit. And they are using a very um, uh, in, uh, uh, robotic technology and 3D camera to sense the plant needs and health. So recycle 100% of the water, electricity generated by solar panels. So second phase actually, uh, they are going for 150 acres and probably they will go with the uh, uh, 60 acres in next year. So training is provided to impart the knowledge about the new cultivation um, practices and technology. So they are using all the international compliance of uh, uh, quality standards. So the, the gap standard that you, you, you can say. So this, these are the pictures from this uh, house. So I will share a one video also of the triangle farm so you can see the whole video. So this 15 acre facility uh, is a single structure with the three growing zone. Why we have created three growing zone so that you can have a staggered plantation of the capsicum in the three zone. So till now they have actually planted uh, crop in the two zones third zone is still uh, under the stage of uh, plantation so in this way they can grow the uh, uh, same quality and uh, quantity year round every day so thanks for listening and uh, uh, you are welcome for any questions Thank you, Mr. Rajendra Kumar, for a very detailed presentation. I now request the participants to ask their questions. We'll also be posting the speaker's contact details in the chat window. Now over to the participants um, to see if there are any questions from them. Mr. Sudhiranjan Mandal has got the first question to ask. Uh, Good evening, sir. It's a very exhaustive and very informative uh, talk by you, sir. 
uh, I have a few questions. It is not a single question. Like all these uh, uh, seeds, all these seeds are hybrids, or uh, how uh, you are doing okay. all these cultivars? Where we are getting from? Is that not native or not? Actually, uh, if you are growing in a greenhouse, then uh, you have to go with the uh, uh, hybrid seeds. So, hello. Uh, yes, uh, I got hello? it. But uh, are the Mr. Mandal, are you getting me? native seeds or? Uh... Yes, sir. You got the answer, Mr. Hello? Rajendra. Okay, so you mean that? Uh... Come up with a nice question. Yes, Mr. Sudhir Rajan. Uh, and this shade net, sir. Well, uh, let, me, let, or, me say, uh, let me clear. The, yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. I'm Mr. audible. Sir, for the question he is he is posing the second question. Yes, Mr. Sudhiranjan. Okay, okay. Uh, the shade nets and retractable roofs, sir. Uh, these are um, yeah. custom made for uh, this cultivation, or uh, they can be uh, used for other crops like onion and garlic or something like that. Which uh, suffered damage uh, in sometimes due to sudden rain. That's a very good question, Mr. Mandal. That actually uh, we have customized this design for a uh, this climate actually, this uh, particular to Jhailavad climate, because uh, our client he was uh, uh, he has planned that he wanted to grow capsicum and uh, cucumber inside structure. So we have made uh, this. As per Jairava climate. Yes, Mr. Sudhiranjan, you got the answer. Mr. Sudhiranjan. Okay, Sir? we'll move to participants for questions. So Sudhiranjan, your questions are over. Mr. Sudhiranjan? The answer to my question, I think. Oh, we have lost his audio. Uh, sir, I have a problem at my end also. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. The trade net. Uh, Mr. Mandar, you can, roof, you sir, can note down my number. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Sir? Sir, yeah, my please please. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Rajendra Kumar wants you to note down his number and send all the queries, which he will go into details. Uh, Mr. Mandal, you can uh, keep, regarding uh, uh, you... cooling of the uh, area. Uh, we can use air. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Right, sir. Okay. Next question, please. Next question. Who is interested to ask the next question? No questions, participants? Uh, Mr. Ms. Mr. Vidya, uh, Sundareswara, Mr. Siddhapa, Mr. Murali. No, sir. Mr. Thank Moh. you. Pardon? Uh, uh, no, sir. Thank you, sir. No, no sir. We don't have okay, questions. No questions from anybody. Okay, that is all we have. Our participants are requested to note down the speaker's contact details and uh, get in touch with him for any further clarification. Thank you. And uh, that is all we have for the day. Uh, we have now completed the round of questions. I'd like to thank the speaker, Mr. Rajendra Kumar, on behalf of Agriculture for taking his time to speak with us. I now request uh, the organizer of the meeting, Ms. Rajini Jain, to please close the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Lakshmi I like to thank the speaker, Mr. Rajendra Kumar, for taking the time to talk with us. I also like to thank all the participants for their time. The meeting will now be closed.